Okay, moving up the limb now, we're going to assess the stifle. And it really is helpful to use one leg uh, just to take a little bit of the weight of the dog, but also to lift the dog off the ground because we're gonna be extending the stifle and making the leg longer. Um, for this manipulation, um, if, you, if, you, if you look at where I'm positioned, I've got one leg um, supporting the back end of the dog here. My left arm is going to come over and put counter pressure on the front of the stifle as my right hand manipulates the distal limb. All the time, I'm gonna make sure that I keep the limb perpendicular to the long axis. So you want to do these evaluations with the limb in a relatively normal position with respect to the rest of the dog. So right hand here with counter pressure over the front of the stifle, left hand just effecting extension of that stifle. Just take that stifle into full extension and just keep it there for a little bit. What you'll often find, as happened with Salty here, is that when you put uh, a joint into an extreme of motion, initially you may get a little bit of a response from the animal. It sort of pulls its leg away because uh, it's not used to having its joints put into that position. But just uh, work with the dog, get into the, the, the full extension there, and then just test that for real comfort. You can see Salt is pretty comfortable now that we've uh, got that joint into extension. Flexion again, uh, very simple. Gonna use my left hand here for counter pressure, my right hand just to flex up the limb, and my left hand is feeling for crepitus as I put this joint through a range of motion there. So I find uh, this position that I'm in a very comfortable position for evaluating the distal limb. I can just support the weight of the dog a little bit and manipulate the distal limb. For the hip joint, I want to be extending the hip joint and so I'm going to move across now, moving my body out of the way and I'm going to use my chest just to support the back end of the dog. This hand is coming underneath again to support the dog. And for hip flexion and extension, I'm going to use here my, my right hand, uh, just uh, holding the limb just distal to the stifle. And from there, I can flex the hip up like this. Um, and then I can also use this hand uh, to effect extension. Now for extension, what you want to do is you want to abduct the limb and then extend it somewhat. What you don't want to do is to pull the limb all the way back because that's going to stress the lower back. And really, uh, what I like to do is to isolate the individual joint that I'm evaluating. So for hip extension, as I said, just hold the limb just distal to the stifle, and I'm gonna move the limb into abduction. So abduction like that, and then into extension. And you'll see here that uh, Salty is just reacting a little bit. I can actually feel that reaction uh, with my chest in contact with Salty's body. So as I abduct the limb and then go into extension, I can both feel some resistance from Salty, I can feel Salty's body tensing, and I can see um, her raise her nose and move her head around. And Salty does actually have uh, some discomfort associated with osteoarthritis of both hip joints. And again, I want to reiterate, what you don't want to be doing is taking the limb and pulling it all the way back like this because that stresses the lower back. And that's as much a test of lower back comfort as it is of coxofemoral or hip joint comfort.